A suspect in one of the most infamous armored car heists in Las Vegas history surrendered to authorities here today. Heather Tallchief and her former boyfriend are accused of stealing more than $3 million from an armored car back in 1993. Police say she drove away from Circus Circus in a Loomis truck full of cash. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Channel 8 Eyewitness News was on top of that story when it happened 12 years ago. We're the only Las Vegas station there for her surrender this morning. George Knapp with the Channel 8 Eye team spoke with her before she turned herself in. George. Well, Gary, this story has movie of the week written all over it. Heather Tallchief was only 21 years old when she drove off in an armored car with an estimated $3 million in stolen cash. Today, after 12 years on the run, she turned herself in. But before doing that, she told the Eye team about the daring robbery and about her life in in hiding. For those of you who haven't met her yet, this is Heather Tallchief. After more than a decade on the FBI's most wanted list, Heather Tallchief appeared calm, almost relieved, as she and her lawyers told in broad strokes of Tallchief's life on the run. She said she's wanted to surrender for a long time, but had a reason for waiting. I wanted to wait till my son was um, old enough and I felt comfortable enough to uh, leave him. I feel that he's a mature enough now to understand why his mother's going to a prison. Tall Chief acknowledged what the FBI has long suspected, namely that she participated in the October 1993 heist of a Loomis armored car and an estimated $3 million. Tall Chief worked for Loomis for two months before she drove away from the Circus Circus Hotel in a van packed with cash. The vehicle was found in a rented storage space two weeks later, but Tall Chief and her boyfriend, Roberto Solis, were long gone. Tall Chief's attorneys, Bob Axelrod of Connecticut and Dan Albrecht of Las Vegas, would not allow her to tell the full story of her disappearance, but she confirmed that she and Solis wore disguises when they chartered a Learjet from Las Vegas to Denver. The FBI tracked the pair to Miami, but that's where the trail ended. Tall Chief says she's lived for the past several years in Amsterdam, where she raised her 10-year-old son and held various jobs. I was working at a chambermaid in a very uh, small family-owned hotel. She retains a hint of an English accent, her lawyer says, because she pretended to be a British citizen during her years in Holland. Tall Chief understands that she faces a long list of federal charges, but there was no hesitation as she marched into the federal courthouse Thursday morning to surrender. She admits her involvement in the robbery, but says she was essentially brainwashed by Solis, who previously served two decades in prison for killing a security guard during a botched robbery of another armored car. Tall Chief's lawyers say Solis was a mesmerizing Manson-like figure who controlled Tall Chief until she got the courage to get away from him. And the fact that she walked away from uh, the true mastermind of this crime without any of the money and uh, was a young and naive girl under the influence of a very powerful, much older man. Tall Chief and her lawyers are hoping federal prosecutors will go easy on her since she turned herself in, but you can bet they'll be asking for her help in answering the two big remaining questions. Where is Roberto Solis and what happened to all that money? We'll have more on that part of the story tonight at 5 and 6 o'clock. Did the U.S. Attorney's Office know she was coming today? They know she was turning herself in? They had no idea whatsoever. Wow. Uh, they, the lawyers had told them ahead of time that they were coming in to talk, but they didn't say why. It had to come as quite as a surprise to have her walk in the door. The only people who knew about her plan surrender ahead of time were the two lawyers, uh, uh, along with the New York Times, Dateline, the AP, and the IT. Very good. All right. Well, good yawn, George. We'll, we'll watch for later reports. Sure. Thanks. Channel 8 Eyewitness News played a role in the original investigation of this crime. In 1993, it was a Channel 8 viewer who led police to a garage rented by the suspects. That's where they found the empty van, Tall Chief's gun and belt, and a few dollar bills. The viewer had rented the garage to the male suspect in the case. Uh, last night, uh, watching Channel 8 News, uh, they showed his picture on TV, and I suddenly clicked in my head that it was a guy that, you, that they were looking for. Until this man came forward, police had wondered if Tall Chief had been kidnapped. But after talking with this viewer, detectives decided that she had participated in that heist.